Hey everybody, welcome to Adore TV. Today, I've got a video on tuning Ryzen 2nd gen and 3rd gen CPUs, specifically the 8 core 3700X and 5800X. We will be undervolting and using V core in the BIOS, Precision Boost Overdrive 2, and Precision Boost Overdrive 2's undervolting offsets in these examples. But before we dive into that, check out our sponsor. So, since the price of hardware has been skyrocketing, you just might be looking for a way to save some money on your build. Our sponsor today, cdkeyoffers.com, has a way to solve that. You can use code ADORE, A-D-O-R-E, to pick up a Windows 10 key or some of the other products they sell, like Game Keys and Microsoft Office. After you order the key, give it a bit and it'll be delivered almost instantly. Finally, that pesky Windows is not activated watermark is gone, and voila, you can put on whatever wallpaper you want just make sure you copy and paste the code. Give it a minute or so to activate the key. And once it's done, you should be good to go. That's, again, our sponsor today, cdkoffers.com. Remember, if you want to save 20%, use code ADORE, A-D-O-R-E. Okay, so today I'm using my primary system, which is an MSI X570 Godlike G-Skill Trident Neo memory at 3600 MHz and the aforementioned 3700X and 5800X. The cooler we're using today is a Noctua NH-U12A that uses their Sterox fans. And as you might know, Precision Boost is AMD's CPU boosting technology that was introduced in Zen 2. With power going to the socket, the current the VRM is drawing, and the CPU temperature. Precision Boost Overdrive's functionality raises the limits of the VRM and power consumption. This allows boosted performance, if your CPU can boost any higher, while being relatively hands-off from you, the user. The first iteration had some drawbacks in single core and was mostly aimed at better multi-core performance. With PBO2 though, you should see some improvements in single thread performance and specifically in the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs standalone undervolting, which should lower temps and improve performance per watt. Alright, so each motherboard is a bit different. Today I'll be covering MSI motherboards. For the 3700X, I went into the Advanced tab, I clicked on the AMD OC menu, then entered Precision Boost Overdrive, then I turned PBO from Off to Advanced, set the limits to Motherboard, the Scaler to Manual and 10X, with Max CPU Boost Clock Override to 200MHz, which is the max setting. So let's jump into the results after testing. For the first result, we can see it running at stock, and this is to give you a baseline. I've also tested with PBO on and a set voltage of 1.3 at 4,075 megahertz. And as we can see, all three of these are pretty similar with the stock setting running the coolest. Although performing the worst in multi-threading, followed by the locked 4,075 megahertz, all core overclock that provided improved multi-core performance, but the worst single-threaded performance amongst all of them, though it had good temps. While PBO setting got the highest temps but best multi-core performance and almost ties in single-threaded performance. So depending on your goal, stock might be the best option. Although if you want better temps, lowering the voltage to around 1.2 or 1.25 might be even better than what we've got today. Now moving on to the Ryzen 5000 series and PBO2, if you want to get into the settings for Precision Boost Overclock 2 on the 5000 series and Undervolt, find the Advanced CPU Configuration option in the OC menu, turn PBO settings to Advanced, and use similar settings as the 3600X, however jump into the Curve Optimizer after. So here you can Undervolt either all cores or on a per core basis. Undervolting is setting the sign to negative, Overvolting would be setting it to positive. For this example, I'm setting the curve optimizer magnitude to minus 5. The maximum here is minus 30. Unfortunately, that's about as good as this specific CPU could get. Next, we have the performance numbers for the 5800X that allows using the undervolting curve optimizer. For this, I used four configurations. The first one was a stock, the second with a 128 watt limit that was aimed more at efficiency rather than maximum performance, but it should be less drastic than say setting a 65 watt eco mode. The third is just running PBO with the motherboard power limits, and the fourth is running an undervolted PBO with the same settings, just undervolted by minus five. So we can see that the CPU ran rather hot under all configurations in the all-core test, mostly due to the fact that these CPUs run pretty warm. 
I think I'll get into why I believe this is a little bit later in the video. So again, stock performed quite well, though running really close to the 90 Celsius throttle point. And the efficiency optimized setup ran a bit cooler and had great single core, though the multi-threaded performance dropped pretty significantly. The standard PBO overclock did quite well, though it throttled sitting at 90 Celsius for most of the test. For those with better cooling, you might get slightly better results, but mostly from what I've read from others in forums and overclocking communities, is that they just run cooler, but not necessarily a whole lot faster. You're looking at, instead of 4.55 gigahertz, more like 4.6. Finally, for the undervolt setting, we see a pretty significant regression in only using minus 5 on all cores. Our example here is likely due to having some pretty low tier silicon for this model and the fact that the 5800X is a single chiplet design. This can lead to heat not being evenly distributed all over the heatsink. Next, I did something a little bit extra using the CSGO CPU benchmark to see if we can see any tangible gains in gaming. In these results, we see a nice gain of about 9% compared to stock with PBO on in the 99th percentiles, though the averages here are basically the same. The undervolt is a bit worse in average, but it's slightly faster over stock in the 99th percentile. And finally, the optimized performance took a small drop in performance coming in last. So turning on PBO does give a nice boost in performance, and the undervolt did help a bit with the 99th percentiles. Though, with a better chip or one of the 5000 series SKUs, you should probably see better results and people pushing their undervolts to minus 10 or 25 would actually end up seeing a performance improvement all across the board. Undervolting on a per core basis though didn't seem to add a whole lot in my specific scenario, though it might make a difference in yours. And before we end the video, just a few pointers. Cooling plays a major role in how much PBO can boost performance, and in most cases, temperature is your limiting factor. And the difference between most motherboards isn't all that much because the limiting factor is almost always temperature. Also, be sure to verify your performance improvements in something like Cinebench or a game you play. Your CPU can run stable while also performing worse. So make sure to leave comments on what you think of this guide or any thoughts you have or what kind of CPUs you've undervolted and the performance you've got. Um, a little bit of extra data will absolutely help. If you like my content, please make sure to check out the merch store. And subscribe to our Patreon, which allows you access to our private Discord, and try to follow me on Twitter. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.